and we are now recording. So uh, April, you can take it away talking about how to embed quizzes and quiz pedagogy for the UNCG Libraries Online Learning and Innovation Webinar. Thank you. You're welcome and thanks for having me and Pat, I'm glad you decided to attend um, and welcome. So today we're going to take a look at, I'm going to start with studio and I know it's a short session and since it's a lunchtime session, it's about 35 minutes max. Um, I'm going to talk for 25 or 30 minutes, give you time to ask some questions. But I'd also, if I have time, I'll go through Panopto and show you how to add videos to Panopto as well. So we're going to start with Studio. And I'm going to go through just basically step by step the process and so that when I actually do this, it will make sense to you what I'm doing. So the first thing you do um, is to go into your course in Canvas and go to your navigation panel and then click on Studio. When you're in Studio, it opens up a menu and with the title of your course across the top and then three lines up here. These three lines might just look decorative, but they're not. It's a menu option. When you click on it, it opens up a menu that actually looks like this and you click on My Library. When you click on My Library, it opens up all of your videos across all of your courses, not just your videos in the course that you were in, but across all of your courses. So this is kind of helpful so that you could maybe add a video into a 216 section that you had already put in your 405 section or something. So we're gonna move on. Once you've clicked on my library, you get down to this menu. There are three dots in the corner of your video that you're going to add a quiz to. So the first thing you do is from your library, pick the video that you want to add a quiz to and click on the three dots that are in the bottom right hand corner of that video. When you click on those three dots, it opens up this menu and the difference is those three dots are on your menus, not in my library, but this create quiz option isn't there. That's why you have to come through the my library option to get to the create quiz option in this menu. So we've gone to my library, we've clicked on the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of the video we want to add a quiz to, and then we create, click on create quiz. Once you click create quiz, it opens up another nice menu where you enter your video title, a description of the video, and then there's an option down at the bottom to hide question markers on timeline for students. I'm going to briefly explain why you want to put a description of your video in, even though it's optional. You can have multiple quizzes for each video, meaning that you might have three sections of the class using the same video and you want to give each section a different quiz. So you could describe that and include in that section 01, section 02, section 03, but just something as a reminder that you'll know which quiz is which. And then this hide question markers on timeline for students. This is an option where students, when they go in and look at your video, if you don't click this and toggle it on, by default it's toggled off so that um, when students go watch your video, they can see markers on the timeline of your video that show them where each quiz question is. Now, I like to toggle that to hide the question marker, so I toggle that on and click on that X, and that becomes a green marker, meaning it's toggled on, because then the question markers are hidden from students and they can't just go to each question and try to answer the question without actually watching the video. Part of this is to make sure your students are watching your recorded lectures from beginning to end. So I like to embed questions to help keep students focused on the content and to help them um, stay involved and engaged in this video. Once I have made those choices, I'm ready to click get started. Once I click get started, I have this new menu down at the bottom. It opens my video up and I have this little plus button. This doesn't look like it, but it's actually my a screenshot of a video I recorded um, in the Bryan School Faculty Resources. When I click this plus button, it opens up a new menu over here to the right you can see that allows me to choose either multiple choice, true or false, or multiple answer question formats. Once I select one of those formats and decide which one I want, it takes me now to this menu. I chose multiple choice. Here's what a multiple choice question looks like. 
Your question goes in this box up at the top. This first box is your answer choice one, answer choice two, answer choice three, and if you want four or five or six answer choices, you just click plus answer and add as many answer choices as you'd like for your questions. To indicate which question is the correct response, you simply click on the circle beside the answer choice that is the correct response. In this example, the first answer choice one is the correct response. If it had been answer choice three, I would have simply clicked on answer choice three, and that would have had the, been selected, and this would have been a plain empty circle. Now, I have some other options down here at the bottom. I can vary points by answer. So if you give um, four answer choices and you want to give full credit for answer choice one, but partial credit for answer choice two or answer choice three, you can set that up and do that um, by your answers. You can also set it up to shuffle your answer choices by clicking shuffle choices. You can provide question feedback and I'll show you more about that in just a minute. We're just going to look at each of the question types and then I'll show you that. This is what a true false question looks like. When you choose true false, you just add the question stem up here at the top and then mark which one is the correct answer. Is it true or is it false? In this case, true is the correct response. Then there's that question feedback again. Once again, when you finish with your question, you click save. I'm going to move on. And this is an example of a multiple answer question. Looks just like multiple choice. You put as many answer options as you can, but the difference is instead of having the circle, you now have a square box and it puts check marks beside all of the acceptable correct answers. So you can have one, two, three, five, as many as you want um, acceptable answers. And you mark those by putting in the check mark. Again, you have the same options of shuffling the choices, um, and then you can provide question feedback. Now, for all question types in the Canvas Studio, those options that I talked about are right up here. So by shuffling choices, that means that the, the, the order of the responses is randomized. So the students don't get the same look at the question. They might have the same choices, but they're shuffled around, so it might not look the same if they're sitting side by side taking the test. Question feedback, I couldn't show you that on the earlier screen, but this is what the question feedback is. For a correct answer, you can give a specific feedback for that. For an incorrect response, you can give feedback for that. Or if you just wanna provide general feedback for, for everybody, you can put general feedback here. Again, when you finish with those options, you click done and you're finished with your test. So I promised to talk a little bit about why adding a quiz to a video is important. I've already mentioned one, it, uh, it helps you to regulate and to monitor how much of your video your students are actually watching. Why is that important? Well, as you probably well know, students often say, you didn't cover that when they are taking a test. And you can say, well, I covered it in the video. And they can say, no, I watched your video and you didn't cover it. Well, by embedding a quiz, you can go back in and you can see exactly how much of the content your students actually watched because it shows you where they watched and when they stopped. And you can also embed your quiz so that they have practice engaging with that content. Now, this is important for two reasons. That student engagement piece. One, they engage with the content, but the way Studio sets up their quiz, if the student doesn't know the answer to the question, they can automatically click go back and rewatch and they can rewatch that section of the video. Now your concern is not that all students make 100, although all students could make 100 on this quiz potentially, because they can go back and watch the sec section of the video as many times as they need to in order to be able to answer the question. So is that a problem? No, it shouldn't be because the point of this test is, number one, it's gonna be a low stakes quiz, but number two, it's engaging your student in your content. Wow, if they have to watch it three times, they've engaged in that, con that, that content three times until they understood it enough to be able to answer the question. It's all about the learning. That's what we're all about anyway, right? We want our students to be able to engage in the content and learn from the content. The second piece is the metacognitive piece. Students have to be able to watch the content 
and then make a choice. Are they ready to answer the question? Do they understand the content enough to answer the question? Or do they need to go back and rewatch the video? It helps them to, them to think about their thinking. And this is a skill set that they will take with them throughout their lives. So anything that we can do to help students reinforce their metacognitive reflection is awesome. And so I believe that these embedded quizzes provide them with that opportunity. So now I'm going to actually go into a Canvas course. Let me go here. And I'm going to go into this studio, which is in uh, Bryan School Faculty Resources Org um, that is set up just like a course. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit a video and I'm going to add a quiz. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose Studio from the navigation panel like we discussed. And remember these three lines, they are not just decorative, they actually open a menu. So I click on those three lines. I used to call it the hamburger, but people thought that that was um, not fair to vegetarians. So I just call it the three lines and they're not decorative. And then you click on my library. So once I click on my library, it now opens up a list of all my videos. If I scroll down, I've got a lot, a lot, a lot of videos. And I could click on load more and load a whole bunch more. I'm not going to do that for the time's sake, but when you go across all your courses, you end up over time having lots of videos. So I'm going to go to this intro to studio webinar. And remember, I told you there were three dots at the bottom of each video. Those are those three dots. And when you're in this portion, those three dots mean something. Notice here that this video now has an airplane on it. It already has an embedded quiz. When you see that airplane symbol on a video, it means that video has an embedded quiz. But remember, I told you you can make more than one embedded quiz per video. So I'm going to choose the three dots on this video, and I'm going to choose quizzes, and I'm going to choose add a quiz because that's what I want to do. It already has one, which I could go in and edit, but I'm going to add a new quiz. So I'm clicking add a quiz. I'm going to name this um, Studio Quizzing uh, number two. And the description of this is webinar presentation, just so I know why I created this. And then I'm going to click the Get Started button to start adding my questions. So I'm going to click Get Started, just like I showed you on the PowerPoint slide. And here's that plus button. Well, I, I'm going to go where I want to put the first quiz question. So I'm going to say I want to put my first quiz question at this point in the video. So to do that, I'm at 16 minutes. I'm going to hit the plus sign. I should know what's in the video. Normally you would be playing the video, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to play the video. Number one, you won't be able to hear the audio and I will be able to hear the audio and it'll be distracting. But number two, I'm just trying to give an example, but when you're doing it for real, you're going to watch your video and come to a place in the content that screens for a question and then you're going to put the question in. It would be just like giving a live lecture in a live class if you've recorded a lecture. Where would you pause in that lecture and ask your students a question? That would be the way you determine where you're going to put a question in your recorded lecture video. Is this a good place to pause and ask a question? If so, you're going to click the plus plus button and you're going to hit multiple choice, true or false, or multiple answer. Like the video, we're, I mean like this PowerPoint slide, we're going to start with multiple choice. And we're going to add a question stem. So I'm going to ask a question here. Studio allows you to add a limited number of quizzes to your videos. All right. And answer. Yes. You can only add one quiz. No, you can add as many quizzes as you like. If I had another great answer, I'd click the plus answer sign and I could type in by clicking plus answer, we can make another one. And the third answer is, I don't know. Um, what does unlimited mean? So now I have three choices. 
Uh, the correct answer I'm going to mark, which is no, you can add as many quizzes as you like, goes right there. And I'm not going to vary points by answer, and I'm not going to shuffle the question choices, but I could, and I'm not going to provide any feedback. But if I wanted to, I could click on the provide feedback and enter general comments. This is a question, and there's my general comment, and then I'm ready to save my question. So that question is not there now. My question is marked by a question mark, but if I hover over it, that question mark becomes a pencil. That pencil in studio simply means I can edit that question if I wanted to. Obviously, if I were really serious about this, I would definitely answer that. I would definitely edit that question. So I'm gonna go right here to 30 minutes and I'm gonna add another question by hitting the plus mark. And this time I'm gonna do a true false. I love creating quizzes in studio for my students. Uh, true or false, I'm going to mark that as true, and I'm not going to give feedback, I'm just going to save it. Now I have two questions in my quiz, and I'll add one more, a third question, just so I can demonstrate all three question types. And when I place my um, playhead on the minute mark, I'm now at 40 minutes and looks like 28 seconds. I click plus, and now I'm going to choose multiple answer. Adding quizzes is easy, valuable to students, add an answer, valuable to the instructor, and I'm going to add one more, not worth the time. So I'm going to check all the ones that are appropriate. Easy, valuable students, valuable to instructors, and the only one I didn't check is not worth the time, because I believe it definitely is worth the time. When I'm done with that, I click save, and now I have my quiz done. If I'm finished with the quiz, I can click done. If I need to go back and edit, I just click on the pencil and I go edit the quiz question. And I'll show you what it looks like. Here's the question. You can go in, you can delete a whole thing. You can type over it put in whatever you want to, change the question wording, all the normal things. When I'm done editing it, I click save. And then when I'm done with the quiz itself, I click done. Now it's gonna embed that quiz into that video. This time when I click on these three dots, I can choose which video quiz I want to edit. They're right here. So that is how you add a studio quiz in Canvas. Any questions on that? Okay, and now I'm gonna do the same thing with Panopto. So I'm gonna go to Panopto video and I have to change courses and go actually into a live course. So this is a real course that I actually am teaching um, because we aren't allowed to use Panopto in um, a sandbox course. So we don't have Panopto in our sandbox courses, so I'm actually in a live course. So I've created a little playlist called Videos Not for Business 216 um, so that my students won't freak out and want to know what this video is. Um, and so in this playlist, I have this Panopto practice. So it's going to open with audio and start playing, but I don't need it to play. It's auto going to play. I'm going to hit pause. Up here at the top, we have some options. We have this pencil, and we now learn that the pe pencil is always edit. So we can click on this pencil, and we can go in and we can edit this video. It's going to take just a minute. And by opening up the edit menu, when you click over here on the left hand side, you now have the option for quizzes. We click on that quizzes option, and we can now add a quiz. Now the thing to remember about Panopto that's different than Studio is it puts in a full quiz in one spot. So if you want to have one question quizzes for each location, you can, or you can put in multiple questions at the same spot. But before you add, click add the quiz, you need to be at the right spot on the timeline, just like in Studio. And so I'm going to say I want to put a quiz here at four seconds four minutes and six seconds, sorry. 
and I'm going to put my quiz here. And so I'm going to click add a quiz. So once I click add a quiz, I have the quiz title goes right here. So I'm going to name this. I'm going to call this Panopto Quizzing Webinar. And now I can add a question. So I have to scroll down and this is a tiny little scroll bar. It's hard to see, but it is there and I scroll down and now I have my question. My question type is right here. I've got a drop down menu. There are four types, multiple choice, fill in the blank, um, multiple answer, and true false. So we have um, four types of questions in Panopto. You just scroll, scroll to where you want to be. I'll say fill in the blank for this question type. And question title is um, nursery rhyme. Doesn't make any sense, but that's my question title. So fill in the blank. So here we go. I'm going to say question. Oops. I'm typing here. And if I add my question, uh, Mary had a little, my blank goes there. And we put in Mary had a little lamb. So this is what it looks like. Mary had a little lamb. And I could go back and I could add more text if I wanted to, um, to have multiple blanks. But we're just going to, for demonstration purposes, we're just going to do one. And then once we have that question finished, we can add another question by clicking add a question. So I'm going to click add a question. And this question type, you have to go back up to the top, is going to be multiple choice. And I've got to type in my question, I'm clicking in the question box. And my question is um, nursery rhymes have deeper meaning than we thought at age five. Go here and I'll say um, deeper, yes. And I'll just say deeper, yes. Okay. And deeper, no. Sorry for not being very creative with my questions. I'm going to add another option, add an answer. Just click on add an answer and there it is. It pops up above it. Um, and oops, but nursery rhymes are silly. And when I'm done, I just scroll down to the bottom. I do have to mark which one is correct. So we're going to say deeper yes as correct. Well, now we'll just say nursery rhymes are silly just for giggles and grins. And so nursery rhymes are silly. And I'm not going to put any explanation in. And now I can add another question. So you can see how this works. You just add questions, add questions, add questions. And when you're done, you simply click done. And now you have um, this quiz that you've now created. It goes right here. And when you're really done, you click finish. So I'm going to stop and I've got a quiz there. You can add all three of those questions are going to be at the same place on the video. If you want to add another quiz, you go to another place on the timeline and then you click add a quiz and that whole process would start again. I have created, just so you know, I'm going to screen share here, step-by-step -step directions and I'll put these in a PDF format and share those if you'd like a copy um, via box um, or drive. And here is the step-by-step -step we walked through for um, studio. And here are the Panopto step-by-steps. Looks very similar. And I should have gone through, through those first so that you would probably absorb more as I went through that. But hopefully you got what you needed out of it. Are there any questions? Great, thank you. Um, I don't have any. Um, Pat, if you have any questions, you can unmute or um, put it in the uh, chat. As you might be thinking of them, just to let you know that for this series of webinars, this was the last one in this series. I think because the semester was ending early, we were like, let's just end uh, the webinars a little bit early as well. But we do have one coming up uh, on uh, our research and application series on, you know, anything to do with research. 
on October 27th on is this a quality journal to publish in? How can you tell? And then in November, uh, we have a couple coming up, one on free data visualization tools for your research tool best. And then another one on what we talk about when we talk about algorithms. Um, so I'll drop that link in the chat, which has the sign up form if anyone is interested in that. So yeah. Quick question, have you ever created any quizzes with, um, within your videos? So Pat is a um, librarian with me. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I have, um, okay, good. but only in studio, not in Panopto. So mm -hmm. I did it with um, a public health course where mm -hmm. I embedded quizzes in a video about searching. They had an annotated bibliography assignment um, done. So it was, um, Nice. I liked it. Um, I think we set that up to be not graded, though. It was more just like a credit situation, uh, but it worked really well. Well, just um, two, two points I wanted to, to make. If you want it to auto grade um, for both um, Studio and Panopto, you need to embed your video within the assignment tool. So, I mean, it always auto grades. It auto grades for you, but I meant if you want it to auto go into your grade book, you need to um, embed the video in your assignment tool using um, the assignment tool. Um, so that way it will automatically be added to your grade book. If you're just doing it um, for students to self reflect and they don't actually get a, um, a grade that goes in the grade book, um, it, they will get a grade and they'll get the feedback, but it won't go in your grade book if you create it in a content page, for instance, or in a discussion board or something like that. But if you use it um, as a, an external tool, then you can automatically have it grade in the grade book. And the other thing I wanted to say is as an instructor, it's really helpful to be able to use um, these embedded quizzes because it gives you feedback on how your students are comprehending your lectures and things that you might have that are a little muddy in your lecture so that you may have to go back and revise your lecture or your recorded lecture to um, help clarify some content that lots of students missed on their first round of taking the quiz. And that's about it. Well, great, thank you. So this is recorded. Usually it takes not very long to process and then I put it on YouTube. Um, sorry, my daughter is watching some show that is really loud and I've yelled at her a couple times. So, <laughs> so y'all don't have to listen to it. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you for coming, Pat. And uh, again, this recording I think will be really useful to a lot of people. And thanks for hosting, April. You're welcome. Have a great day. Everyone have a great day. Bye. Thanks, bye.